Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Kadisha St. Louis. In the headlines, contracts signed for over $200,000 in Point Michel, $5 million to be made available to Ministry of Health for free medicine, and a contract signed for a multi purpose indoor sporting facility. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years, and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from Sansover, our product from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and have them pick. The uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips I ever have. I'd have to put on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything, but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Thanks for staying with us. Dominica's Honorable Minister for Finance and Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, has announced that an additional $5 million will be made available to the Ministry of Health in the upcoming budget to provide a free medicine to those who cannot afford it. The Honorable Prime Minister made the announcement as he addressed a town hall meeting in Watton Waven on Wednesday. In the upcoming budget, the Ministry of Health is asking for $5 million more to buy medicine. On top of what we gave them last day, they're asking for another five million dollars to buy more medication. And part of this request is that a number of people who are suffering from various forms of cancer, the medication you buy, the hospital will give it to you for free. So the government is not going to take a decision. So those of you who are suffering from diabetes and, and um, cancer, to make those drugs available to our citizens free of charge. Because we recognize that these drugs are critical to some of the patient's well-being. So we now have to include $5 million more in this year's budget. Meantime, the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, says his government's investment in education has made it possible for 100% of the population to receive a tertiary education. He was speaking at a town hall meeting in Watton Waven on Wednesday. Today, we have set the foundation for there to be 100% access to the state college, providing that you, you, you acquire the minimum entry requirements to enter the college. And as we speak, as we speak, there is about 90% of all high school graduates now attending the college as compared to 7% when we came into office. And so when, when people sit to ask, well, what are we doing for the young people? My friends, there is nothing more you can do for a young person by giving him an opportunity to attend school. There is nothing you can do more and better for a child who comes from a, a, a parent, a single family home who's struggling to make life meet, to, to make it, and to turn that child into a doctor, to turn a child into an agriculturist, to turn a child into a surveyor, and to give him the opportunity to look at the world as his, as his marketplace and make a living out of it. That's what we have been able to do. He stated that government's focus on education is clear from the advancements made possible through strong diplomatic ties. When we establish relations with China, and China asked me, well, you know, how can I help, how can we help Dominica, how can we work with Dominica? The first request I made of China 
The first wasn't the hospital. It was in the stadium. It was in the West Coast Road. The first request I made of China was for scholarships for our young people in Dominica. I said, I want my young Dominicans to learn Chinese or Mandarin so we can place them in a category where in the world they would be able to attract jobs. And so far, since the establishment of diplomatic relations some 13 years ago, we have sent over a hundred young people to study on full-time scholarships in the People's Republic of China. The Honorable Prime Minister had these words of advice for students. That when you get a scholarship, when you get a grant from the government, do not go to this people's country and form the fool. Stay in school. Stay in school and be positive-minded people. Do not engage yourself in unnecessary, foolish talk. Anything that is not going to elevate you, elevate your mind, enlighten you, you should not engage yourself in it. So we are committed to this. In more news, on Friday, a contract was signed for a multi-purpose indoor sporting facility. GIS's Kimani Seja has more. Work on the construction of the National Multi-Sports Complex has officially got underway as a contract was signed for the architectural designs of the facility on Friday. The contract signed is between the government of Dominica and the Puerto Rican firm Marquez and Marquez Architectos. The Honorable Finance Minister and Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, says this marks a great day for sports development in Dominica. Honorable Skerritt hopes that the facility will serve as motivation for young men and women to engage in sports professionally. We all know that over the last uh, two decades, three decades, there has been a revolution in people's ability to make a decent living out of sports. That sports is the highest paid profession now in the world. And no matter where you're from, you can make it to the, to, the, to the highest level of your sporting discipline. But we recognize as a country that we need to have the facilities at the international level. And this is why we're constructing, we intend, we're moving towards the construction of this indoor sports facility, which will cater for basketball, volleyball, uh, netball. We have a swimming pool. We have tennis courts, and we also have some of the courts ex uh, that will be out outside so that we can have for day-to-day for -day, um, playing. And this is going to be a significant investment in our young people and in sports development. Marquez and Marquez Architectos will also provide management and supervision services of the project while Dominicans will be engaged in the actual construction. The Honorable Prime Minister says ease of maintenance will be considered in the designs. A delegation of members of various sports associations and a steering committee for the facility, including former sports minister Rupert Sarendo, accompanied the Honorable Minister for Sports, Jessica Charles, to Puerto Rico earlier this year to view firsthand the work of Marquez and Marquez Architectos. Honorable Charles detailed some of the features of the complex. The design of the complex will include the indoor facility, which will comprise three courts. Also expected to be part of the design are outdoor courts, two tennis courts, and a swimming pool. It is worthy to note that the Ministry of Sports, Youth, Culture, and Constituency Empowerment engaged a wide section of stakeholders which included representatives from each of the court sports who will serve on the who presently serve on the technical committee working group to bring to bear their knowledge of the requirements as per international standards it is therefore fair to say that with the advent of this indoor facility, Dominica will be positioned to host regional and continental events. The contract signed is for an amount of EC $3.68 million. For GIS News, Kimani Sejan reporting. Thanks, Kimani. 
You're watching National Focus. More when we return. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the, in the harmony of things. You know, in everything we do, we have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light, you know, because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that the same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business. You know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer, because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Alves, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. Major road rehabilitation projects have been scheduled for the Roseau Valley constituency. This was confirmed by the Honorable Minister for Public Works and Ports, Senator Miriam Blanchard, as she addressed the town hall meeting in Watton Waven on Wednesday. The minister revealed the details of the ongoing work in the Loda area, costing government $1.6 million. Moving forward, designs for the rehabilitation of sections of road from the Coptor Bridge to the Mont Prosper Bypass will be completed soon within the Ministry of Public Works and Ports. In addition, the Ministry is actively working to engage consultants to prepare estimates for other sections of road in your community as well as in the rest of the constituency. And that consultancy will also look at the design of new bridge structures not only in your constituency, like I said, in your community, but in the Roseau Valley constituency as, as well. But I don't have to ask you why we're doing this, because you already know why we're doing it. We're doing it because you're important, because the tourism industry is thriving here. We need the tourism industry so the economic activity can continue, so the economy can grow. If the economy is growing, people are getting new jobs, people have money in their pockets, Everybody's smiling, everybody's happy. At the end of the day, you know what our focus is, and this is what is driving and pushing us to continue to work hard to make you smile, because if you smile, we are happy. And I know you're going to smile if you can see better lives for each and every one of you. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what is pushing us to do what it is we're doing. Honorable Blanchard remarked that these projects are further proof of the level of importance the government places on that constituency. The works at Providence will begin soon. You'll be happy to learn that the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance this week approved the contracts for the works at Providence. That contract of $1.6 million, you hear the size of the investments we're doing in this, in this constituency? 1.6 million alone is going to be for that project in, in Loda. And that sum will include, or the, the, the money is going to go towards the realignment of the road, slope stabilization, and the construction of retaining walls, drainage structures, and road pavement. The source of funding for these projects is the Citizenship by Investment Program. How many of us enjoy that new road right led us right into here tonight? How do you think that project was financed, ladies and gentlemen? By the CBI. So I think we can all say that the CBI money invested in this constituency, in this community, has benefited all of us here tonight. So that means it's an important source of revenue for your government. Yes? Because let us say the Honorable Prime Minister wanted to do the roads anyway. Because we already established you are important to him and to the Dominica Labour Party. If there was no CBI, how would that road be financed? Where would that $2 million come from? We would have to pay more taxes. So I don't know about you. You know which one I prefer? CBI. Me too. I think all of us prefer the CBI to that. 
And finally, on Thursday, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Sufria constituency, Dennis Charles, presented two contracts for road rehabilitation in Point Michel. Lurian Graham Carter has details. At the signing ceremony, the Point Michel Village Council Chairman Hassel Williams signed a contract with Richardson Rages for over $157,000 for road work on Royalty Lane. And a contract for Savon Road for over $42,000 was signed with Kimon George. Honorable Charles stated during a signing ceremony at the Point Michel Community Center that this is part of government's plan to upgrade village roads around the island. We will sign today two contracts for the reconstruction of Royalty Lane, um, which is right behind the, the council's building. And near the health center, we're going to continue. Um, part of the road was done a few years ago. We're going to continue that section by the um, clinic, Savan Road, and some other smaller roads in uh, route footpaths in the community, one in um, Lord Bore, and another one probably in the Green Valley area. So these are very important projects, small but important projects, as we ele ele elevate the standard in our community. Honorable Charles expressed gratitude to the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, for his vision and leadership of Dominica. She highlighted the importance of such a project to the community. Many people have vehicles now, and one of the major complaints of vehicle owners is the cost incurred in repairing because of um, challenging um, road situations. So I'm very pleased in our community we have seen a number of road projects from since 2014. We have done quite a few and we will continue to do. She revealed other projects that she hopes will follow soon. I know many people are interested in Mon Lofty. That was also submitted, and I hope to receive funding for Mon Lofty and the other roads that need to be done in our constituency. So this is just the continuation, and we are starting with these first two roads, but we intend to do all the roads in Point Michel. Both contractors are from the community. I expect you to do an excellent job on that project. I don't expect any shortcuts. I expect you to perform your best, and that is all as Palarep that I ask of you, that whenever you do projects, you take pride in your projects and you do your best at them. The project will be executed through the Village Council. Reporting for GIS News, I am Lurian Graham Carter. Thanks Lurian. Let's now join a Shakira pair for some of the headline stories making the news this week. <music> Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback. In the headlines this week, Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt has committed $250,000 towards development of small businesses in the Roseau Valley. Speaking at a town hall meeting in Wharton Waven on Wednesday, the Dominica leader stated that following a recent meeting between the small business unit and small business owners in the community, it was recognized that a cash injection into the community was necessary for small businesses to thrive. Government has embarked on a project costing over half a million dollars to fortify the Anzime Bridge. The bridge is the only access to the Douglas Charles Airport in the north of the island. For Honorable Paul, the commencement of this project reflects government's dedication to ensure the safety of citizens. On Tuesday, we witnessed the signing of eight contracts for road work in the Rosa Valley area to the tune of close to $1.5 million. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Rosa Valley constituency, Dr. John Colin McIntyre, stated that the aim of this project is to create a seamless road network within the Rosa Valley. Also this week, the Ministry of Public Works signed five contracts to the sum of EC $2 million for solar lighting and a contract exceeding $700,000 for road rehabilitation in Hampstead. This contract signing is a continuation of government's street lighting program along the E.O. Libla and Dr. Nicholas Liverpool highways. The Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development continues its mission to educate entrepreneurs around the island about how to better manage their small businesses. 
On Wednesday, 51 participants received certificates at the closing ceremony of a two-day training session for small business owners of Castle Bruce. This is the ninth group which has been trained over the past two months. The Honorable Member of Parliament for Castle Bruce, Johnson Drago, says the sessions were necessary. These are some of the headline stories making the news this week. For details of each of these stories and others, visit our website or Facebook page. Back to you, Kadisha. And that's the English segment of the news. The Shakira Pair is up next with Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel aquéon, non, mais c'est Shakira Pair. Premier ministre, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Scarry, de l'âge à gouvernement investi en éducation, fait possible pour yon sans pousser Dominique, tape éducation, université. Honorable Scarry, de gouvernement, j'a dépensé 15 millions de dollars pour éducation à Dominique. Honorable Scarry, de relation et puis c'est chinois là et puis d'autres pays, Dominique, mis à faire veille, qu'à bénéfice éducation, yon l'eau à Dominique. Il dit que ces relations sont là qui font des scholarships avec les jeunes de Dominique. Pour le ministre Scarry, il a encouragé ces étudiants-là qui ont tapé l'opportunité pour servir bien. Honorable Scarry a parlé pendant le Town Hall Meeting à Watton Waven, mercredi, c'est même ça. À d'autres nouvelles, il y a un long projet qui a pris place à la constituante Petit Savane et puis même parlé à la constituante Sala, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru. Bien plaisir pour le développement là qui a fait à constituency là. J'ai dit nouvel gouvernement te visiter ce projet là et puis résidence haute constituency là dit yo content pour projet là. Yo projet nouvel gouvernement voit c'est une réhabilitation yo chimé à Bellevue Chopé. Honorable Daru dit gouvernement ka continuer pour travailler pour développement Bellevue Chopé. Au là nous ka deux bout c'est c'est nous ka exister une Bellevue Chopé. Ah, mais ben, ben, là, tout, tout le monde uh, qui a uh, une belle occasion, et ben, pour que nous fassions ce chemin uh, pour, 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 pour assurer que là, là nous faisons l'autre communauté, là, là nous faisons l'autre communauté, là, qui n'est pas ever, ever ça, ça qui existe. Aileen Lloyd, c'est un résident en Belleville Chopin qui a bénéficié de la réhabilitation de Chimé là. Il remercie le gouvernement pour le projet là. Chimé non, c'est rough, c'est mauvais, c'est vraiment, vraiment mauvais. Parce que là, la pluie a tombé, là, tu as plein de glou. On ne peut pas faire de la boue. Tu as mis côté plus haut, tu as mis un swap quand tu dormi. Et tu as tellement de temps. Moi-même, tu as mis pour aller au petit conseiller. Tu as dit que ça, tu as fait ça, tu as fait pour chimer nous. Donc, je vous remercie de me dire que le gouvernement est nécessaire pour aider nous à faire des chimer à Bano. Et puis finalement, le ministre Public Works, Senator Honorable Miriam Blanchard, fait parole que le gouvernement a dépensé l'argent pour travailler chimer à la constituency de Rose Valley. Honorable Blanchard, le gouvernement a dépensé à valer 1.6 million de dollars pour ce projet sala. Honorable Blanchard a été adressé au Town Hall Meeting à Walton Waven, mercredi semaine passée. L'argent pour faire ce projet sala possible, c'est Hot Citizenship by Investment Program. La. Honorable Blanchard dit que le travail chimé est une major priorité du gouvernement. Ça, c'est tout pour nouvelle Acroyole. Nous sommes chez Shakira Pell. Nous sommes bon week-end. Au revoir. Coming up next, our tip of the day, the health benefits of green tea. Studies show that green tea has numerous health benefits. Its antioxidants may interfere with the growth of bladder, breast, lung, stomach, pancreatic, and colorectal cancers. It also prevents clogging of the arteries, burns fat, reduces the risk of neurological disorders, reduces the risk of stroke, and improves cholesterol levels. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on a past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Kadisha Sedri. Thanks for watching and do have a great weekend.